Welcome to Success Weekly with James Tharris, a weekly dose of thought-provoking ideas and helpful tips on improving your mindset. And now, here's your host, James Tharris. Hello and welcome again to another episode of Success Weekly. I'm James Tharris. Good to be with you again. We are now going to jump into Chapter 14 from Psycho-Cybernetics. So we're, we've got one more chapter after this one, and I hope you've been enjoying these. Chapter 14 is entitled, How to Get That Winning Feeling. Uh, the, the only information concerning the environment, circumstance, or situation available to it is what you believe to be true concerning them. Your nervous system can't tell real failure from imagined failure. Uh, so again, it comes right back to the self-esteem and self-image at, at all times, and that's what this entire book is designed to do, is to get you to realize and those things and free yourself from some of these these traps that you've kept, kept to yourself in bondage with. Uh, call up, capture, evoke the feeling of success. When you feel successful and confident, you will act successfully. When the feeling is strong, you literally can do no wrong. Now for me, this is one of the reasons why I like to and, and, and enjoy driving a nice luxury automobile. It's, it's very easy to feel great about myself getting into that, looking at it before I get into it and, and stepping out of it. And I feel, you know, I just feel better. So I feel success. It's kind of a, for me, it's a wealth indicator. It's an, it's an indication that I can have these things too, just like anybody else can. And so I shouldn't be focused on scarcity mentality and, and failure. I've got to focus on the successes that I have in my life. I like to, to dress in nice clothing and that for the same reason. I, feel, I just feel much better about myself when I walk out in a public and I'm clean shaven and I'm dressed in a nice set of slacks and, and dress shoes versus shorts and a t-shirt. You know, and there's a time and place for shorts and a t-shirt as well. But when I'm in business mode and I really need to focus on my success and get to the next level of success, I've got to dress properly. I've got to listen to the right kinds of music or, or uh, positive, uplifting things and, and speak to my mentors and, and you know, have constant reinforcement of my successes. Uh, okay, next it says, define your goal or end result. Picture it to yourself clearly and vividly. Then simply capture the feeling you would experience if the desirable goal were already an accomplished fact. And that's when we always we talk about in the world of success is acting as if. Act as if you already were something. So if you already were a black belt in our martial arts school, if you already were a black belt, how would you take your how seriously would you take your training? How often would you train? What would you be doing before classes? You know, how much time would you devote to your training after classes? Would you be you know, helping other students? You've got to think as if you were a black belt in, to, in order to behave like one. And it's the same thing for somebody that, that if they think that they're thin and they behave like they're thin, eventually they will become thin. So it's another way of kind of saying fake it till you make it, I suppose. Um, it's not about being fake, but it's about faking the, uh, the, the fact that maybe you haven't already achieved it but you're on the way to achieving it. So you've got to fake your brain into believing that it's already happened. So you start identifying with that something that you're trying to accomplish or be or do or have. Uh, okay, next it says, when you reactivate successful action patterns out of the past, you will also reactivate the feeling tone or winning feeling which accompanied them. By the same token, if you can recapture that winning feeling, you also evoke all of the winning actions that accompanied it. So let me read that first piece again. When you, react, when you reactivate successful action patterns out of the past, you also reactivate the feeling tone or winning feeling which accompanied them. Now this is very important because, especially like in sales, somebody that's in sales will, will get into what they call a slump, a sales slump, where they go out and, and it used to be that they were, uh, let's say they were going door to door selling vacuum cleaners that, like they used to in, in the past and they would knock on 10 doors and out of you know, 10, 10 doors they got 5 people to say yes and then the next 10 doors all said no and then the next 10 doors all said no and then the next 10 doors all said no well what that, in, that uh, va vacuum cleaner salesman or insurance salesman as I was about to say has to think about at that point is you know what the first group that I did uh, knocked on the doors. I got five of them to say yes. How did it feel getting them to sign on the dotted line and, and collecting the money and, and handing this this handing them the product? How did that transaction feel to me? 
it, it makes you feel great. You're helping somebody and you're getting helped in return. And so when you're in one of those sales slumps, that's the time you have to remember your successes. And you have to think to yourself, well, I did it before, so I could probably do it again. And it, it, it all comes down to your frame, the way your mind is framed, your mindset. Are you, are you framing your mindset with negativity or are you, and, and failure? Or are you reliving past successes and believing that you can do that again? If you did it once, you can do it again. Okay, let's see. What else do I have here? The only cure for worry is to make a habit out of immediately substituting pleasant, wholesome mental images for unpleasant worry images. Each time the subject finds himself worrying, he is to use this as a signal to immediately fill the mind with pleasant mental pictures out of the past or, an, or in anticipating pleasant future experiences. In time, worry will defeat itself because it will become a stimulus for practicing anti-worrying. That's kind of cool, anti-worrying. I, like I like how that sounds. So if you become an anti-worrier, you do exactly the opposite of what a worrier does. And when, when you think about it, the things that you worry about, you know, how are the bills going to get paid? You know, what, what am I going to do about this particular situation and it's two o'clock in the morning? Sitting up all night worrying about it, what good does that do to, to, for you or to anybody? It, it doesn't do anything good. These people worry themselves sick, as the saying goes. And, and sometimes it just doesn't pay to worry about things that are so far in the future, there's not much you can do about it right now. Now, you might be able to sit down and, and plan for, you know, how, ask questions to yourself like, how, how can I get out of debt? How can I pay this bill? What are some things that I could do to make extra money quicker to pay this bill? See, I don't consider that worrying. I consider that planning and, and strategizing. But sitting back just worrying, oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. Do you see the difference in the question there? I don't know how am I, I'm going to pay these bills. I don't know how I'm going to get get through this. This is this is uh, stressful and 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 I don't know what I'm going to do versus, you know what? There's some There's a situation here where I've got some debt that I need to pay off. Let me tap the pencil here on the paper and let me see if I can come up with some things that I might be able to do to help pay this bill. You know, do I, maybe starting with a little process of, do, what do I have in the garage that I haven't used in the past 10 years? Let me, let me list out these things. And you might find five or 10 things and go, wow, you know, I wonder if anybody would be interested in buying these things. Maybe I could list this on Craigslist for something and instead of throwing it out like I was probably going to do, maybe I can make $100 out of this. And put that towards the the balance of this this bill that I owe you know maybe I could maybe maybe I could look into some kind of a part-time employment uh, on the side helping you know a, a, a parent or a grandparent one of my grandparents with some kind of a side project maybe they would be willing to, to pay me a little bit for that or you know maybe they're hiring on at, at uh, you know for the holidays they're hiring on at this particular store and maybe I could get three hours per week and make some extra funds to so you start thinking like that that's not worrying that's strategizing that's planning and that's healthy but to sit back and just worry for worry's sake because you don't know what's going to happen and what you're going to do and thinking about the outcome, well, that's, that's terrible. It's detrimental to your, your psyche. What typically happens when we sit back and we worry, we jump to conclusions, and then whatever the problem is in our mind gets amplified two or three times. It becomes a much bigger, uglier, nastier problem than it actually is. But in our mind, we've, we've conjured up these thoughts about how things are going to go and, and, and typically we're wrong on, on those things. I don't know about you, but I am. I've, I've had so many times where I expected something to go really badly only to find out that it, it went just as well. It went just the opposite of that. It went really greatly, went excellent and didn't, didn't go badly or even partially badly. It went excellently. And it wasn't, if it wasn't for me going to that event or doing that thing and, and pushing myself through it, I would have never realized that and I would have if I would have avoided doing it for instance I would have sat back and said wow you know I really dodged the bullet there because that was probably a terrible thing only to hear from somebody else who did it oh man you should have went that was the greatest thing in the world you know but but it's too late at that time because I worried myself sick and worried myself out of actually trying so so you've got to be careful about getting caught in that that cycle of worry so the choice is up to you it says, within, a, within you is a vast mental storehouse of past experiences and feelings, both failures and successes. Like inactive recordings on tape, these experiences and feelings are recorded on the, the neural engrams of your gray matter. They are recordings of stories with happy endings and recordings of stories 
There, there are recordings of stories with happy endings and recordings of stories with unhappy endings. One is as true as the other. One is as real as the other. The choice is up to you as to which you select for playback. And isn't that, I mean, that's what we have the opportunity to do every day. You can turn on the news and you can be bombarded with all the rapes, killings, fires that have been set, riots, uh, corrupt politicians and uh, natural disasters and weather disasters and other things and all these bad things and they can, that can just really make you sick. Or you can choose to turn on television shows like Shark Tank or back several years ago, The Apprentice with Donald Trump. There was a great television show that was educational and let you kind of see behind the curtains uh, as far as business goes, how, how uh, people were hired and fired and what mattered and what didn't matter. It was a really kind of educational. At the same time, it was, uh, it was educational, but it was entertaining as well. And then, of course, they brought on The Celebrity Apprentice, which followed the same lines, but it was a little bit less entertaining or educational because they were all celebrities that have that and and we just kind of watched them you know self-destruct and go fight with each other and things like that and so there was some entertainment and a little bit of education but the original apprentice had the a lot more education behind it but but you can choose and i can choose to watch educational shows like that or watch something educational on pbs or i can choose to turn into tune on turn on the news and hear all the negative things that have happened in in, in the life uh, in, in life today or over the past week and there's speculations on what might happen which creates more fear and doubt and worry that's they've got all the pundits on the, the news stations telling you how every decision is going to turn out or how they think it's going to turn out and oftentimes they're wrong I mean heck the weatherman's wrong more often than he's right we we, we we're expecting to get five days of, of rain and then all of a sudden the next five days are sunny and a couple of clouds and, and the temperature was five or six degrees different than what he or she said it was going to be. So so they don't know what they're talking about any more than, than we do. And to sit and focus on and dwell on the negative things, that's a choice. So final thought here, it says, change your mental imagery and the feelings will take care of themselves. Change your mental imagery, so again, the news, that's an example of mental, mental imagery. And all, of all you see is people getting killed, people getting mugged, people getting robbed, you know, uh, fires and buildings collapsing and, and, you know, people complaining back and forth over the aisle. Then that's going to shape your worldview and that's going to be the, Im those are gonna, going to be the images that run through your mind more often than not. And that can affect you in a, in a very negative way. So you've got to keep con control of what goes into your, your subconscious. And that's, that, again, that's what this whole book, Psycho-Cybernetics, is all about. It's teaching you things that, that you've made mistakes in your life and how to fix them. Exactly the things to avoid, what to stop doing, and what to start doing. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. We, need to. we need to first learn what we need to stop doing. It's kind of like the, the old saying that if you're, if you're in debt, you know, stop, stop digging. Or if, if you, how does that saying go? It's if you're in, if you're in debt, stop spending money, basically. But if you're, if you're, you know, stuck in a hole and you're d deep down in a hole, well, stop digging. That's the first thing you do. Otherwise, you're going to get deeper and deeper in in the hole. In this case, deeper into debt. So if you stop spending, that's the first thing you stop doing. And then, what are some things you could start doing to start changing your situation so that the debt doesn't get worse and actually reverses itself? Well, it might be that you pay. You know, you double up on one credit card and pay off the big balance first, and then you take the, the, the amount that you were paying for each of those other two credit cards and double those up. Instead of spending that money, you pay that third credit card off or that third bill off, and you keep doubling up as you re free up the money from one of the other bills so that you're, you're using that, uh, those funds to mass massively and aggressively attack each one at a time until they're gone. And that's really that's the way I, I, I came out of uh, – I paid off $70,000 of debt in I think 2002 is when it was in one year I did it and that's exactly how I did it going back and thinking about it is I, I doubled up the I, I paid a little extra on one credit card until I got it paid off and then the money that I was paying and doubling up on it was you know took a little bit of discipline for me to to not have you know to maybe instead of getting you know ramen noodles with with the uh, extra wide noodles I got the ramen noodles the basic model and, and for a couple of weeks I scaled back a little bit so I could have an extra 20 or 30 dollars at the end of the month to throw at this other bill and help bring it down and then once I got that first bill paid off the money that I was going to spend on that bill I, I put that hundred percent to the second bill and paid it off twice as fast and pretty soon you, you start 
taking care of the principal and the, the interest goes away and you're able to pay things off very quickly and it compounds. And it's, so it's the same thing with your mind and the things you allow into it and, and what you allow to shape your worldview because that can compound as well and it can really, it can stymie a lot of people. It can really stifle a person's creativity and kind of knock them out of the game of life because they, they throw their hands up and say, well, what, it's not worth it. Why should I? Because every time I try to do something, it just fails, you know, and, I'm, and it, the system's rigged against me, so why should I even bother? It happens to so many people and they lose that, that passion for life because they've allowed the scarcity and, and, and uh, fear mongering that the, the, the world media does to us uh, to, to keep them from functioning and reaching their true potential. So that's when you've got to go back and play those, those past successes in your mind. I guarantee if you're listening to this, you have succeeded very strongly at one or two things in your life. You've just got to remember what those one or two things are and don't forget it in times of need because there those times are going to come and you've got to learn how to guard against that. So that's what I've got for this week. Uh, next week, I'll be back with our final installment from the, from the book Psycho Cybernetics. Hopefully by now, if you've been listening to the podcast, you've bought this book for yourself. And if you have, I'd love to know your thoughts on, on what you've read so far. See you next week. That's all for this week. Tune in next week for another episode of Success Weekly. Do you have an idea you'd like James to talk about in an upcoming episode? Post your comments and be sure to share this podcast with friends. 